Today we're talking about background worker component. And I really got into this out of sheer desperation. I was writing a program that did a file copy or a series of file copies, like potentially a hundred file copies. And some of the files were absolutely huge. And this program would run for a while and the UI would hang up and everything would basically go to hell. I, I actually felt like the whole system was hanging up. So I researched a solution to this and Background Worker was an excellent solution as it turns out. Uh, background Worker actually has three events but the two we're looking at in this video are Do Work and Run Worker Completed and you initiate a background worker via run worker async which sort of gives you a hint along with the word background of what it's about. It's essentially spawning a new thread and uh, the, the main thread continues to run while the spawn thread runs in the background and the advantage of this is the UI doesn't hang up because the UI is running totally independent of the background process at that point. And in order to simulate a process running, I'm using the thread sleep uh, method of the system.threading namespace. And the thread.sleep method takes the number of milliseconds uh, that you want the uh, thread that is it's referenced on which in our case is a background thread to pause or, or sleep and if you say a thousand in other words it's going to sleep for one second at that point in the code and the arguments to uh, the uh, two events we're looking at are do work event args and this is always referenced as an e object and that's the argument for the do worker do work event handler and run worker completed event args once again referenced as an e and that's referenced by the uh, run worker completed event handler and these are largely used to communicate across threads really in the program and the uh, they break down into properties that you can set values to in order to do this communication and the do work event args breaks down into e dot argument which accepts an argument from the run worker async which is used to initiate the process and e dot result which passes a result back and the main place I pass a result back to is the run worker completed. I don't know whether you could pass it somewhere else as well, but that works out in terms of what you want to do with the program generally. So in the run worker completed event args uh, argument has the property e.result. Both of these actually have several more properties, but these are the only ones where it can concerned with in this program and the e.result gets in a result back from the do work as I mentioned previously so in effect you can take uh, the e.result and do work as being the same uh, variable as the e.result in uh, run worker completed well, let's complete cut or uh, start a new application from scratch call it background background worker 01 press ok <coughs> create a new uh, windows application and we don't really need much on this form except a button so let's drag a button over that says uh, well that's weird I guess these are in sorted order or category order let's uh, have the text say uh, start background 
worker and then give it a name of uh, PTN for button in Hungarian notation start background and stretch this out a bit and maybe give it a better font always like about 14 because I can't read 8.25 And then we can uh, center this by just going center horizontally and center vertically so it's nice and centered in the form. And then in order to get a uh, background uh, worker we need to go down to the uh, components and there it is and just drag it over to the form and since it's invisible of course you don't actually see it on the form but you see it down in the component tray or the gray area at the bottom of the screen as all the documentation seems to say and if we look over at the uh, properties pane of the background worker I'm not sure whether I have to set this to true but just to be safe why don't we well we're not reporting progress that's actually the event we're not talking about. But if we go to the three events, they're do work, progress changed, and run worker completed. And in order to get event handlers for these, you just double click on them. So if I double click on do work, it goes to the code behind with uh, background worker one underscore do work. And if I do the same thing for run worker completed, I get the background worker one run worker completed and you notice these have the arguments of do work event args e for uh, do work and run worker completed event args e uh, for run worker completed so essentially they're the name of the event handler with event args uh, appended as a suffix and then that's always the object e and then we want to create a event handler for the button in order to initiate this uh, uh, background thread so if we go uh, background worker dot run worker async and then just give it an argument of a five and that five will end up being passed to the do work event args the e dot argument and of course we'll have to cast it since that's a totally uh, undefined variable we'll have to cast it as an int or usually when you're passing an argument to something like this in fact you have a structure so you pass a lot of information on the, the one e dot argument but we're just passing an int in this case and for the do work I'll just paste the code from the clipboard and you see we have an internal variable or a local variable to the function of n loop count and that's set to that's typecast to int from e dot argument since e dot argument could be anything it's like a var and then we have another local variable ix is set to zero and we have a while loop that says uh, while ix is less than the loop count that we got from e dot argument uh, auto increment ix pop up a message box that says uh, what the ix value is and then we do a thread dot sleep to take uh, to give the impression of something taking time to run and in order to use the thread dot sleep we have to put in a using of uh, system.threading dot 
so we don't get an error on that anymore. And then we're setting the e dot result, which is also a part of this do work event args, equal to uh, your long running background program has completed joy joy. And then for the run worker completed event, just put in the uh, code uh, string end message equals typecast to string e dot result. So this e dot result becomes effectively the same as this e dot result. We have a communication between the do work and the run worker completed. Just as we previously had communication from the button event handler uh, with the run worker async and the do work with the e dot argument property of the do work event args. And we're basically just getting this thing from e dot result and then popping up a message box that shows it. So let's compile and run this code. First save it. And if we press this button, the message box pops up with the one. And you notice there's a noticeable pause while the thread sleeps. When we go through the loop, and it hits the last value that got passed to it, 5. And then we have the your long running background program has completed, which actually is a message from the uh, completion uh, event handler, but is passed from the do work event handler. So run worker completed is displaying it, but do work is actually the one that's passing it. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.